guys, welcome to Book Time. My name is Julia. Today's video is actually a vlog of the Springathon Readathon, which I've been doing for the past two weeks. The two books I read, um, neither of them were on my TBR. <laughs> but in fact, one of them, the only one I finished was Underland by Underland by Robert McFarlane. I always put the emphasis wrong. And the other one that I started was Sea Shaken Houses by Tom Nancollis. So uh basically i finished this one and i feel quite fondly about it now but it was a journey of ups and downs along the way which you will see in this video firstly i haven't actually started any of the books in my tbi yet and that's because as i mentioned in my previous video about what i'm currently reading I was in the middle of so many books that the idea of starting more just stressed me out. However, one of the books that I was already reading is a nature book, which is Robert McFarlane's Underland. I've talked about this a bunch of times. And in the currently reading book, I mentioned that I put it on pause because I wasn't loving it. And so I tried to go back to it and I read, I don't know, like another 20 pages. I've got like quite a lot to go, like maybe not 200 pages, maybe another 150 pages. So quite a lot. And it's like, it's not a short book. It's sort of a 500 or it's 460 pages. And I found it kind of hard to get into, like I mentioned earlier. So this book is about Robert McFarlane writing about various phenomena that take place underground, natural and man-made. And he's got a lovely lyrical style, but I'm finding it very, masculine in the sense that it really draws on that sort of masculine cultural narrative of the man in nature and it's very tough and hard and real and he meets you know these sailors in Norway and they can see right through him with their ice blue eyes and it's sort of like this mythologizing of the natural experience which like don't get me wrong I love nature and I find being in nature very powerful but there's this idea of like this like men and like in the wild and the only women that appear in the book except for one who is um the young woman who takes him under the tunnels in Paris all the women in the book are wives of the men who show the author around underground and they're always at home making the meals and he talks about like the stalwart wives sort of supporting their husbands who live these dangerous lives you know fishing in the Norwegian seas or you know whatever the case may be and while I'm not criticizing the choices of these people to live their lives like that it's more that the author hasn't like he never acknowledges the fact that it's his male white privilege that allows him to go on all these journeys to just write a book about it like maybe if he'd acknowledged it I would be more sympathetic but it's sort of just this idea I don't know, he mentions in one line so far in the whole book that he misses his children. And I'm like, oh, apart from that one line, I would not know you had a family, presumably, unless his children are grown up, which he doesn't mention, but from the sound of it, it sounded like they was, were not grown up. Probably his wife or other family members are caring for his children while he goes on all these adventures. And it's sort of just this traditional setup. Um, which frustrates me because Mercedes actually mentioned in her, I think it was her Springathon video too, I'll mention down below, that she, one of her frustrations with nature writing is how masculine, sort of male dominated it is. And I find that too. So, I don't know. I definitely am not getting the hype on this one. I have read other books from the shortlist of the Wainwright Prize, which is what this book won last year. And I have found other books more compelling and captivating so but i know a lot of people have loved this so I, I i am gonna finish it i will check in again um to let you know where i'm at but if you have finished it and loved it please let me know because i'm really interested to talk through it and whether other people sort of found these same issues in it that i'm having the other one that i'm reading um which was not initially on my tbr i talked about this in my currently reading video too is sea shaken houses a lighthouse history from ediston to fastnet by tom nancolis and this is really great so i read 30 pages this morning so i'm not very far in but i'm really enjoying it it is what it says it's a history of um 
lighthouses built out on reefs or uh, yeah reefs out at sea so not on the mainland and starts at the first one that was built in the 1600s which is pretty amazing I don't know if you can hear the rain but it just it's been raining all morning and now it's absolutely pouring it sounds really nice I don't know if you're picking it up on camera but it's nice to talk about this book while it's raining and in the introduction the author says that this book is like a series I think he's written seven or eight chapters that are essentially essays about him going to visit the sites um, but obviously the Eddiston one because the, the, the first like three versions of the lighthouse collapsed hundreds of years ago he can't visit them so it's just sort of the history but so far I'm enjoying it so hopefully um, I'm hopefully I'm gonna read I'm gonna do a few hours of work now and then have lunch and then maybe read a little bit of this over my break didn't get very far with my lighthouse book. I read about 10 pages, not even, maybe five pages about the Bell Rock Lighthouse in Scotland, which was really cool. But I was just so tired. I think it's because outside, well not outside, but out in my office it's quite cold. And then I came into the main house to have lunch and a hot chocolate and it's so toasty and warm in here. I just got really sleepy. So <laughs> I'm going to try and do some other things like hang up the washing and maybe do the dishes to try and wake myself up maybe listen to an audiobook and hopefully do a bit of reading later in which case i'll check in then bye on thursday mornings i get 20 minutes in the morning in bed by myself and my husband is out in the living room with the kids before he goes to work before he goes to work in the study down the hall because we're working from home so <clears throat> i've got the kids all day today so i get 20 minutes in bed at the start so I'm going to read a bit more of the Lighthouse book and I read a bit more last night about Bell Rock Lighthouse in Scotland which is probably very well known in the UK but it's not here and it was super interesting and it was really yeah so I mean I'm still halfway through that chapter but so far it's been really interesting reading about um, the guy from Edinburgh who designed the um, Lan like the glass in the lantern in the Bell Rock Lighthouse. He was also the guy who designed all the um, like iron work and um, lanterns and stuff in Edinburgh's new town. So that's pretty cool. True fact. Hi guys, it is Friday morning and I thought I'd just do a little Springathon check-in. It was one degree Celsius when we woke up this morning. It's probably about five degrees outside now it is very cold in my office even though my husband at like 7 a.m came out here to turn my heater on which was two and a half hours ago still freezing in here so i have my beanie on and i also have a woolen poncho which i wear for studying when it gets too cold however check in so i read a bit more of underland actually i'm really enjoying the chapter i'm reading at the moment it's about glaciers it's written in greenland and there are more women in it so he robert under uh, robert underland robert mcfarlane goes with a group of friends with some greenland residents on a very in a very remote community hiking on this glacier and the whole chapter is about um how we can learn about like what what are the deep time lessons and sort of scientific findings that we can get from the ice so he talked he's interviewing um in part the chapter is an interview with this paleo what is it called paleo geologist paleo ice isologist no that's not what it's called a paleo climatologist a glaciologist and an ice core scientist robert mcfarlane interviews this guy about um, all the, yeah, all the scientific findings, the way they drill um, down to the ice core and how like how old the ice is they've been able to find so far. It looks like it's really old. It's like over 100,000 years old. Um, things like that. And what they can learn about uh, climate change cycles from back then to help us with navigating what's happening in the present. It's really interesting. He also talks about um, how because of climate change, a lot of the permafrost and the ice caps are melting and sort of what's rising 
from you know what was previously thought to be buried and under underland underground is now rising to the surface because um, of climate change so things like reindeer carcasses with anthrax spores um, sort of thawing out and then people becoming infected so it's really interesting and also the journey that he's describing so he does in part describe sort of how they get out to the glacier on the boat and talks about the people he meets it feels a lot more communal or something a lot more about uh the networks that humanity has have you know with each other and with the landscape and that sort of inter integrated way like the way that we affect each other um which i feel like is more the point of the book it's more what he wanted the point of the book to be it's what he talks about in his in his introduction how this book turned out to be very communal it's very much about humanity and the planet because everything that is you know it's, it's about the, how we are affecting the world in the anthropocene and how we can read back and what that you know what can, that can tell us about us and how we live and all that sort of stuff and so i think that's why i was finding the solo sections where he's just journeying through the mountains by himself less compelling because i didn't f feel like they resonated with the key sort of narrative and story that he's trying to tell through this book so I'm really enjoying this particular chapter as it may pan out it might just be that there are certain chapters I don't like particularly in this book and others that I do I don't have much to go hoping to finish it today so I will check in soon and let you know okay so I just finished Underland and I I like the book now I like the book so yeah, in the last thing I think I was talking about glaciers and then it moved on to more stuff about glaciers but a different kind of angle. And then the final chapter was about um, nuclear waste storage facilities, uh, primarily in Finland but also the ones in New Mexico and sort of, well, how they work. But it was mostly to do with the ways in which that um, basically the world, humanity, in the form of particular focus groups um, full of various experts, have been trying to um, build the facilities, mark the facilities, write warnings on the facilities, because basically this waste will last for a very long time, tens of thousands of years, hundreds of thousands of years, unclear, and we don't want anyone else to use it, whether they're humans from the distant future or other beings from somewhere else in the distant future. So trying to work out sort of a language or a, you know either a written language or a pictorial you know language like how do you make it clear that this stuff is bad and should not be dug up uh, and that was really really interesting and compelling and so I think overall with Underland I did enjoy it I gave it four stars and I think basically my main thing was that it could have been edited down it was really long Robert McFarlane is a great writer very lyrical but a lot of times he gets a bit carried away with the nature description which is really nice writing um, but as I mentioned in earlier parts of the vlog that wasn't always relevant like when he was doing solo climbing through the mountains and it's like well this book's supposed to be about the underground and about humanity as a whole and like com like connection rather than just a solo person climbing mountains so yeah I think a lot of that could be could have been edited out and I feel like some of the chapters were stronger than others like I've come away really remembering very clearly all the stuff he said about glaciers um, and how ice is a really good indicator of deep time, the way we can read back. I really enjoyed the stuff, well, enjoyed the stuff on nuclear waste. I found it really um, illuminating and compelling, interesting reading, even though it was challenging and hard and upsetting to read. And I really loved the chapter on the Paris catacombs and all the sort of caving you can do underneath Paris. To me, that one was less about deep time. Like, I think... The subtitle of the book is A Deep Time Journey and I feel like some of the chapters he, he kept the thread of deep time going in a more effective way than others. And so yeah, for me it was a four star read. I think the stuff I was talking about, about masculinity and feminism and gender roles, that kind of cleared up a bit towards the end, as I mentioned with when he went on the group sort of month long expedition into Greenland, like the unmapped sort of areas of Greenland, um, with a group of women and men. And that was very, 
like clearly he has a lot of respect for women and thinks they can be great climbers too but I did find there was maybe I think could have done with a little bit more discussion of his privilege that he was able to just go out for weeks at a time into this very dangerous harsh landscape while his small children and I looked it up he does have small children and presumably partner were at home and sort of you know, the mechanics that allow him to do that sort of thing um maybe could have helped because I feel like if you're going to be talking if you if you want to make these sort of not claims but I guess intimations about what humanity is doing as a whole what kind of legacy are we leaving I think I feel like gender is an, is an important one that you want to talk about I can see why it won the prize but I do think it needed editing and I would read this writer again in terms of the sea house sea house the sea shaken houses one I am still up I'm still only nearly at the end of the bell rock chapter so hopefully I will get to that soon and we'll discuss it in a future wrap up all right guys thanks for watching and catch you soon bye